Hi guys, uh, this is about how to boot a USB drive from the Oracle VirtualBox uh, virtual machine. So first of all you need to download uh, the uh, Oracle VirtualBox and you can do it from this link virtualbox.org click on the download section and then download your Windows uh, version it's just one version for both. So download that and install it and now you need to go to reboot.pro click on the downloads area find the boot tools area and then download David B's virtual machine USB boot utility which we also need to download and install So once we've got our downloads done and installed, you should have these two icons on the desktop. And we need to run Oracle Virtual Manager. And uh, if you just launch this, you'll get a few messages on startup. And we need to make a new virtual machine. So just choose new, uh, type in a, a name for whatever your virtual machine is going to be called. And it's obviously going to boot from a USB drive eventually, so uh, you can put uh, something to do with booting from USB in it. And uh, we can make a virtual machine for Microsoft Windows, say for Windows 7, uh, as one example. That will set up the the different uh, bits of hardware in the VM for specifically for uh, Windows 7. So just increase the memory to get a decent amount of memory in there. We don't want to create a new virtual hard drive. So just click on create and a virtual disk image will, will do fine. So just choose next and dynamic allocated uh, so that uh, it's not, uh, not too big to start off with. 25 gigs should be plenty. Now we've made that we need to just uh, alter the uh, storage uh, hard disk drives that we've got set up. Um, the reason for this is that the um, uh, David B's virtual machine uh, utility needs to have an empty slot so what we need to do is delete uh, any controllers we don't want so in this case it's going to be a SATA, um, SATA only virtual machine so um, we need to delete the uh, uh, CD from it and we have to leave an empty space for the first hard disk because that's where the USB drive is going to be uh, inserted by David B's uh, virtual utility, virtual machine utility. So, uh, so set that to SATA port one. Uh, but of course, we need to make sure that there are at least two SATA ports in the virtual machine. So, see there it says port count two, and that's on SATA port one. So, SATA port zero is free now, and. Uh, we should be able to add our USB drive into that. I'll show you how to do that later. So just check the other system settings now. Take out the floppy and the CD because we don't want it to boot from that. We want it to boot from the hard disk, but the hard disk will actually be the, the USB drive when we put it into that first slot. And uh, hardware virtualization is much faster if you enable virtualization. So uh, just enable that on your, uh, on your virtual machine. I'll just do quickly do another example here. This is how to set up a virtual machine with an IDE interface. So again, we just use new, type in a name. And I'll just call it IDE because this one's going to be an IDE uh, hard disk interface. And maybe we'll just uh, set it up for Linux. And leave it as Ubuntu. Whack up the memory a bit. We create another uh, virtual hard disk for this separate one. So again, just click next, and uh, we can have a, the name for the uh, the VDI file. And again, change the storage settings. So we don't want SATA in this case. So notice what the uh, VDI is called and just delete that uh, entry and delete the SATA controller. We've now got an empty CD drive there so we don't want that, we'll delete that. 
Now we need to add in our um, VDI file, existing disk file, so just select that in there. And it's been added in as the primary master, but that's the first slot. We don't want it in the first slot, we want it in the second slot, so change that to primary slave. And that leaves room for the USB drive to go in as the primary master, and it'll boot off the first drive in the system, which will be our USB drive. So let's just uh, start the utility, David B's utility, and add in a virtual machine. So the name of the virtual machine is the name that's going to appear in the utility. It can be a different name from the one that you've got in uh, VirtualBox. And as you can see there, you've got uh, a QEMU choice as well. You can actually run QEMU instead of VirtualBox, but uh, there's really no need. RM Prep USB will run QEMU. And you can, you can just choose your USB drive from the drop-down list there. I've got a verbatim 16 gig USB drive. And now it appears as an item in the, in the uh, form. If you look at the options menu, there's an option to show a second USB drive there. So you can have two USB drives attached to the virtual machine. Uh, and we've got an option there to add enable VT, which is virtual technology. That greatly speeds up um, the virtual box uh, virtualization. So if your CPU is capable of it, then use that. And we'll just uh, change the options here to have it on. Uh, it's quite handy to be able to turn that on and off because uh, if you boot to XP, uh, it doesn't like it on. So it's best to turn it off for XP setup. But once you get to the second set stage setup and XP, you can turn it on. And here we're just adding the second virtual machine in, which is the IDE one. Again, just choose either baiting USB drive that I've got plugged in already and uh, might as well enable VT permanently on this particular setting. So now we should be good to go. Okay so let's try the uh, USB boot SATA entry. I'll try to boot off my USB pen. So there's the Oracle session and it's booting off the pen. I've got easy to boot on this pen, so uh, it's also got a script font, so it's rather difficult to read. But you can see that it's booted fine. Now when you go to close the virtual machine, make sure that you choose power off the machine. Very important. Don't use save the machine state, otherwise it'll just boot up with the same state that it either left it in. You don't want that. You want to power off the machine, so make sure that item is selected. Let's uh, try the second virtual machine. It's got to wait for the previous session to close. This is a, a bit of a nuisance, but uh, it's very slow to close sometimes. If you get a failure on booting, then just quit everything and try again after about 30 seconds, and it should work. And there we go, it's booted again to the same, to a different virtual machine, but the same USB pen. And we can uh, try and select a menu item in here, just to make sure that it is um, working. Let's just choose the first stage of uh, XP install, perhaps. Um, say this sometimes crashes if uh, VT is enabled, but uh, we won't get that far. In this case, I'll just uh, make sure that we can boot off the ISO. And there we go, it's, it's booted up to uh, Windows Setup, straight off the ISO. And make sure, that, again, you power off the machine. So just to uh, demonstrate some troubleshooting, uh, if we run the uh, Oracle um, virtual box manager. Um, it, you see it might give us a warning about uh, uh, a virtual machine, a virtual disk here, the, the VMDK, which belongs to our USB drive. And it's saying it's inaccessible and we can't actually run the virtual machine. Now this, this happens sometimes, especially if you run the virtual machine too fast, one after the other. Um, but what, one way you can do to clear this is to just go to the virtual media manager select the uh, USB virtual machines that all begin with VMUB and release them and then remove them and just do the same for each one and then when you rerun uh, David B's utility it'll, it'll re remake those uh, VMDK files and uh, you should be good to go so there we've got the primary slave is the actual hard the virtual machine hard disk and of course if we try to boot off this now it'll just try to boot off the empty 
disk and it won't uh, it won't boot. But if we actually uh, just quit uh, quit that and just run the virtual machine, you'll see that um, it first of all waits for the uh, the current job, the service to to finish. Uh, this can let's say can take a while and sometimes this fails. So if it does fail, don't worry, just wait about 20 or 30 seconds and try again. See it's still trying, it's still waiting for it to finish. It should eventually finish. And uh, when it does you can uh, just try again. So it didn't actually work that time. So uh, another thing you can do of course is uh, just try a different machine. Let's just close that. Maybe that'll help. You can see there's an option here to run faster, but you must close VB Manager first. So we could try ticking that and then closing the VirtualBox Manager and then uh, try and run it now. It seems to be more reliable actually on that setting, um, less trouble. So it depends what suits your particular host system. And you see it's now run without a problem. So just find the setting that suits your system and you shouldn't have a problem. Once it's set up and, and running reliably uh, it's extremely useful. It runs very fast and uh, you've got full read-write access to that USB drive under the VirtualBox machine. It's brilliant.